Now, as we are nearing the celebrations of the festive season, different travel companies have hiked travel fairs to travel across different cities within the East African region. We have more of that report. With a few days left to celebrate Christmas, transport fairs have hiked, forcing people traveling across cities within the East African region to dig deeper into their pockets. Before Christmas reach, we always charge around 40 direct to Juba. And that is a 3 by 2 bus. If it's 2 by 2 it's around 70 to 80,000 Uganda money. But from now, Christmas time, at least Gulu was around 25 to 30. But now, now from here to Gulu is 40. Every price at least is increasing up because of the Christmas season. Na uli saizi wa mahaiki bayi. Ni mwala kukuja kuenda at least kwa wafadhali. Lakini kukuja Kenya, kukuja Uganda, hae wa meongeza bayi kiasi. Towards every end of year, a big number of people working in the city tend to go back to their up-county homes to bond with their relatives during the festive season. And as a result, this increases population of people traveling, hence increasing the demand, and as a result, transport fares shoot high. We have like uh, 45 bus companies with uh, 600 buses going to different routes. Starting by November, to December, people move a lot. Uh, we found it that it's a bit challenging, whereby we have like 600 buses, but so far the number of passengers are more than the buses. You find yourself that uh, people are even sleeping in the what in the terminals, waiting for the buses, which might cause, uh, which is causing insecurity in the terminal. Recently, uh, we managed to get like uh, over 77 people who were stuck here in the terminal due to lack of uh, transport means. Kenya's inflation has increased to 5.7% in the month of September from 4.0% the previous month due to increased taxes on petroleum products which has culminated to the increase in the transportation fares. Kutoka Nairobi mpaka huko imepanda lakini kutoka hapa kwenda kwa tu hivyo bila ipi. Napandisha kwa sababu saa hii inalingana vile mambo yanaendelea katika hali ya uchukusi. Sasa zingine watu upandisha kwa sababu wanajua January ni ukame upande wa Kenya demand iko juu sasa tumeongeza shilingi 200 on top ya ile kwa sababu wasafiri ni wengi sasa imebidi management imeonelea kuongeza nauli upande wa Kenya kila sehemu Nairobi Mombasa Mombasa Busia Mombasa Malaba zimeongezwa shilingi 200 kwa kila nauli ilikuwa shilingi 2000 sasa wameongezea 200 kwa demand ya season ya Christmas kwamba iko juu. Kusema kweli upande wa Kampala hatuna gari nyingi. Tuko na gari mbili peke yake. Na competition pia iko juu. Sasa ukiweza kuongeza nauli itakuwa utata kwa wale wengine. Sasa imeonolewa kuachwa nauli kwa ile ile. With our findings, it should be noted that from Nairobi to other destinations, bus companies have already increased their fares to almost double to the original prices. The revocation license from one of the East Africa's biggest bus company, Modern Coast, has also contributed to the factor reducing on the players in the transportation industry in the biggest economy of the East Africa. It should be remembered that National Transport and Safety Authority of Kenya revoked the license of the region transport giants following the accident that saw two of its drivers dead and more seven lives taken with more than 60 injured. Kuta mara nyingi hata ikiwa kwa mfano modern wamezuiwa kwa TLB huko Kenya kusafiri imeathiri watu wengi na imeathiri kwa hali ya uchumi pia wa Kenya. A sport check done by Smart24 TV found out that the majority of the local bus operators have increased transport fares by either 15,000 or 20,000, while those that travel interstate have remained constant from Kampala to other countries. Route ya Kampala to Nairobi have to change the fare. Abiria mekuwa wengi na ata ivo sisi kwetu have to change the nauli sababu ya Christmas. Nauli yetu ni 85,000 kwa sababu basi zetu ni VIP. Tuna safari za Nairobi, Kampala, Kampala, Nairobi, Kampala, Dar es Salaam, Dar es Salaam, Nairobi. 
Dar es Salaam Mombasa hizi watu ni wengi. Ndio sababu nilisema hatujaongeza bei. Unajua katika biashara saa zote demand ikiwa high na price pia. Mm, sasa price tumeongeza sehemu zingine zote kama Kenya tumeongeza lakini Kampala Dar es Salaam hatujataka kufanya usumbufu hapo. Tena tutaki tu abiria wapate kama ni challenge kwao. I'm a Kenyan and I came to Uganda for holiday. And uh, if I compare the prices, the fair prices, they're still okay. Uh, they've, uh, they've not gone up. Uh, maybe next week, but for now the transports are still the same. It's the same price I paid when I came to. Routes whose fares have already increased include Nairobi to Kampala, Nairobi to Dar es Salaam, Nairobi to Kigali and Juba to Kampala. While Kampala to Nairobi, Kampala to Busia and Kampala to Juba, the transport remains constant. Kuna semu, kuna badi, kwanza hata na Kenya, saizi kuna shida sababu hata na basi zinapita kwa mizani, kwa waybridge. E, si jambo la kawaida lakini sasa hatuna cha kufanya sababu uamuzi wa serikali lazima tutafata tu hivyo hivyo. Kwa hivyo tunapata shida saa zingine umeenda yani mna waste time pale sababu umekuta gari zingine kwa waybridge na waybridge ni moja. Basi ni nyingi sana. Sasa unakuta mna waste like 2 hours mmesimama mna ngoja kupimiwa basi yenu. If you reach in the South Sudan side there is also fear. Passengers cannot move like the way they are moving in Uganda. And also South Sudan pound is, is nowadays valueless. It is better for you to buy like a milk and then instead of sending the money. If now in South Sudan you may carry someone from, from Juba to Kampala, maybe 30,000 Uganda money. And that money is very little. But you see you don't have another otherwise. You, you can, because if you lose, because there is a lot of buses from Uganda, like uh, some buses, one company can take around four to three buses. If you have one bus and maybe you, you leave that customer, maybe that customer is giving you 20,000 or 30,000, you cannot manage to put the fuel. And fuel also, crisis of fuel also is too high because in the side of, from, from outside of Kampala, the fuel is around 36, 37. Mm -hmm. Juba to Kampala, the business is not so well. The business, it is they have a lot of challenges because uh, especially South Sudanese, no money. But, but if no money for the civilian, also no, no business. Because we people of business, we are focused on civilian. And we are focused from citizen and foreigners. People don't move a lot. Because there's a lot of challenges of dollar. Because like dollar, like hundred dollar now, it is like around 34,000 Sudanese pound. That is around 365,000 Uganda money. That money, it is not everyone is resting such a money. Yes, it is few people. In other discoveries, the local based transport operators have increased their fares from Kampala to other destinations within the country. The routes include Kampala to Gulu, Kampala to Mbarara, and Kampala to Mbali. Prices are expected to go higher in the remaining weeks to the festive celebrations. Christmas time, at least Gulu was around 25 to 30, but now, now from here to Gulu is 40. Every price at least is increasing up because of the Christmas season. And also this Christmas is just only a week. Special this week by starting around 26, 27. Maybe we will we'll, we'll remain the normal price. Yes, we'll never be there. Smart 24. Hello everybody, my name is Colin Twavonye. I work in Smart24 TV sales department. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Keep watching Smart24, we promise to give you more. Ngebule naku mbale umaka bili kumi na muenda Tugumaleko Kuludaru wa wasubu Ziba sanze evi somo za vingi Atene evi nunyi na wiva de vingi Bwepaku tuusa kukoti ya kesise ya site oro Butede vomula muza kugamo musangu kukusinze Kakati wafaini ya, ya mituwala ana Oba gende ruzile miezi mukaga Nienga baku kutene evi ntubi ya mituwala kumi Kate mba ibate kwa umiri muchi Asuro kwa te mituwala itana Asuro towe mese Mituwala itana aleta ensene ne Mituwala itana asuro ngato Mdwada na zula baga na imiza uvulamu. Atemu kama njinyagaro tegeri, ndi haba tembiba uwele da habana. 
bawe yirira era bazala ebyo nebirala mu program taba miruka wa basubuzi ngatuli wa mune ba dereva ba conductor abasubuzi abebyo bulamu ngatuku baganya birozo ngatuku ba torch mu nsonga ezikutte ku basubuzi mu mwaka 2019 nange muzukuru wa walusimbi tosuba Capital market experts have anticipated tough times ahead of the festive season. Shamira Nagawa has more on that report. The capital markets in the East African community date back to the 1950s with the establishment of the National Stock Exchange in 1954 in the East African British Protectorate. By then, which acted as the stock exchange for the entire East African British Protectorate, with listed companies from the founding members of the bloc, which are Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. After the collapse of the East African community in 1977, the Nairobi Securities Exchange remained a Kenyan outfit, with all the non-Kenyan companies delisted and nationalized in their respective countries of Uganda and Tanzania until the 1990s that saw Uganda and Tanzania establish their own national stock exchanges where the Uganda Securities Exchange and the Dar es Salaam Stock Exchange, respectively. Capital markets development in Uganda began with the enactment of the Capital Markets Authority Act, which subsequently led to the establishment of the Uganda Securities Exchange in 1998 and the other East African community partner states, where later followed with the Rwanda Stock Exchange in 2011. Burundi is the only East African community partner state yet to establish a capital market, but plans are already underway to develop a capital market development framework that will pave the way for the establishment of a capital market in Burundi. The East African community has four operational stock exchanges, the Nairobi Securities Exchange, Rwanda Securities Exchange, Dar es Salaam Securities Exchange, Uganda Securities Exchange, in Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, and Uganda, respectively. A total of 110 companies are listed on the four exchanges, 62 on the Nairobi Securities Exchange, 9 on the Rwanda Securities Exchange, 21 on the Dar es Salaam Securities Exchange, and 18 on the Ugandan Securities Exchange. By the end of 2011, the four East African Community Stock Exchanges commanded a combined equity market capitalization of 22 billion US dollars, for which National Securities Exchange accounted for 55%, with a market capitalization of 12 billion US dollars. In relation to the significance in their respective economies, the Nairobi Securities Exchange equity market was most significant, accounting for 36% of Kenya's gross domestic product. The current state of Uganda's financial markets can be described as emerging market, which is at an early stage of development. Uganda's capital markets have tremendously improved, scoring highly in areas such as trade and settlements automation, according to a report compiled by ABSA, which operates the Barclays Bank Africa franchise, where Uganda was ranked ninth among 20 other noon, withstanding its low turnover. We at the capital markets uh, appreciate 
um, it, organizations such as yourselves uh, because you create opportunities. Um, our slogan here is we inspire growth and we've gradually seen growth in this company uh, from um, Rabobank coming on board, the rights issue in 2017, um, the expansions that have gradually seen the bank grow and the group grow uh, by leaps and bounds. In terms of um, in terms of performance, our market structure is really an institutional based market. Uh, we majorly have large investors, and uh, when they do come to market and do transact, we do see a lot of activity. Um, Prior to this transaction, DFCU had traded 1.4 billion um, shillings uh, year to date. With this transaction, that has grown to 49.5 billion. So the impact means that we moved from 75 billion in trading turnover to 125 billion uh, year to date. And that shows the remarkable impact institutions play when they come into the market and exit. But it also creates the opportunity for the market to be viewed globally. The, the impact of the international investors in our market is quite significant. So we look at about 83% uh, of our investors are large institution, but also foreign investors. So they have played a big part. Whereas we continue to grow the retail aspect of the business, um, it's not been as significant because the level of savings in our country is not that high. I think it's under 5%. Over the last 15 years, financial sector reform has been implemented, strengthening of the central bank, liberalization of the capital account, interest rates and the foreign exchange market. Privatization has seen the growth and development of the private sector in the country, the establishment of the Capital Markets Authority to regulate the securities industry in the country and the establishment of Uganda Securities Exchange that currently offers three instruments including government bonds, corporate bonds and shares sell to facilitate a vibrant secondary market for issued securities and the removal of restrictions on foreign participation in the sector. I believe that uh, a transaction done with the stock exchange helps realize the true value of an entity. And so I want to really encourage our first one that DFC Limited for, for, for taking the step 15 years ago to this on the stock exchange. I also want to encourage all other firms out there, especially if they've got ambitious growth plans um, to become publicly quoted because your shares can actually be used as an acquisition currency. You don't always have to use cash to acquire, to make an acquisition. We've seen that done by some of the bigger Kenyan banks in their foreign, in the DRC and other African markets. So there's the huge benefits um, of being publicly quoted on an exchange. Uh, you increase your ability to attract and retain good quality stuff. As you can see, I'm not sure whether Mr. Katamba will move from where he was. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the main benefits um, there's a the brand visibility, you're also able to attract and retain customers who also have the ability for not only big depositors but also shareholders in, yeah, in the financial institution. So they benefit both from the services you render but also from the dividends that uh, they earn from time to time when you make profits. I'm just going to do a quick calculation of. Uh, the time when you listed, I think your share price was about 200. Um, 230. 230. Now it's about 650. Um, I'm going to just make a statement about my. With Uganda having only 17 firms listed on the stock exchange with a total market capitalization of shillings 22 trillion, the growth curve of capital markets in Uganda is challenging with a participation largely limited to elites and large corporations. However, growth has been slow in the sector with the exchange experiencing long droughts of initial public offerings. The exchange currently has nine locally listed companies and eight cross listings, all from Kenya. South Africa, Nigeria, Namibia, Egypt and Kenya, among others, are highly ranked ahead of Uganda, which is an indication that Uganda must engage in innovation to increase on its product portfolio in a bid to create diversity.
Our role then as a CFA is largely to protect investors and to ensure that, uh, that the people who intermediate between the investors and the issuers are conducting their business ethically um, and soundly. And to appreciate the role of the CFA, just imagine the market for water regular. That's what it used to be like many years ago, because indeed we recognize that markets have existed long before regulators. But uh, regulators, the regulators' main role is to ensure that there's confidence in the market and to ensure that protected uh, investors are protected at all times. Um, and essentially to, you know, as a fair referee in this field that we're, that we're playing here. In other news, President Yoweri Museveni has commended China for its continued support towards the development of the East African region in a meeting with Chinese delegates that took place at State House in Entebbe. President Museven commended China's support towards severe infrastructure development, including the construction of the standard gauge railway, which will connect East African region upon its completion. He added that China has played a big role in the construction of oil reserve roads, pipelines connecting Uganda to the Indian Ocean, the development of the industrial parks, which are important in boosting agriculture, industrial and mining sectors in Uganda and the region at large. In recent times, China has offered more socio-economic support by bringing Chinese companies to invest for Africa development and according to China Africa Cooperation Forum, Chinese financial support to Africa is $60 billion. Uganda's bilateral relationship with China has greatly strengthened in the Uganda Investment Authority Performance Report for 2018-2019, where China was ranked as the top investor in Uganda with investments worth $607 million, about 2.2 trillion Uganda shillings. Reporting for Smart 24, I'm Shamira Nagawa. Basi tumefikia tamati mwa kipindi chetu cha karibu East Africa. Mimi ni Sadamu Bale tuonane alhamisi jayo.